Hello again and welcome to Dan White Books, the book review channel where we add insights into the worlds of literature for both those who do read and those who don't. Today's review is of a newly released non-fiction work detailing disorganisation and calamity across the United States of America as a little known virus sweeps over the world. I wonder what that could be. Today I review The Premonition by Michael Lewis. The Premonition is one of the first in no doubt a soon to be long running list of books on the coronavirus pandemic. I picked it up specifically because of the author branded on the front, a Mr Michael Lewis, an author whose non-fiction works are really quite hard to miss, arguably the two most successful of these being The Big Short and Moneyball both of which have also gone on to be highly successful Hollywood films. I absolutely love The Big Short as a film, and although it's currently sat on my bookshelf, I have yet to read it. The film, however, is something truly outstanding and is certainly worth checking out. And while we are on the topic of film, I'd just like to announce I have started up a new YouTube channel aptly named Dan White Films. So if you are interested in the latest cinema releases, please do check that out. I will have a link in the video description, but please bear with me, that's a new channel, and I'm just trying to fit in all the work. I love the work. Now, I picked up the premonition almost immediately as I felt it would be one of the first to comment on the coronavirus crisis, although I did neglect to read the blurb once again. That does seem to be a, a failure with me. I didn't quite realize how much of a focus this book had on the US the USA's handling of the pandemic. That is my fault and no doubt a mistake that many probably will not make. To make it clear, this book solely focuses on America's handling or rather failed handling of the coronavirus pandemic and not on that of other countries in the world. In this sense, it may be wise to have a basic understanding of US politics under the belt before diving in. Ignoring my general ignorance, this book is a detailed account of a group of scientists and medics who are trying in their utmost to be noticed. They watch on in disbelief at the misinformation and downplaying of their own government in the face of the biggest pandemic since the 1918 influenza. The book starts with detailed accounts of the main influences, these including a woman named Charity Dean and her obsession with diseases, a nuclear scientist called Bob Glass and a critical care doctor slash analytical genius called Carter Mecca. During the start of this book, you get an insight into how the minds of these individuals work and on their foresight and fear at the state of pandemic planning and disease control. You also explore the public health system across the United States and the rather bizarre and blasé thinking in regards to disease control and prevention. To put shortly, this is an area incredibly underfunded and filed high up on a dusty shelf. In the early 2000s, little to no one was really thinking about future pandemic planning, same with 2010's Ford, and I'm sure this was the case for a a whole wide range of countries. Our ignorance to the threat was comical and as such when disease struck the world was left severely wounded and with no recent event to compare, at least in the memory of those who were in control, the severity was never fully realised until it was all too late. It may be of no surprise to you now but Covid-19 swept over the world like a gigantic tidal wave impacting nearly every country on the planet. The information provided in this book details the constant passing down of decision making from the US government and as such the ensuing chaos that resulted where next to nothing gets done and government institutions take no responsibility. Author Michael Lewis goes on to detail the difficulty in decision making where one must be at least five steps ahead and he really does offer a scolding critique on the CDC and its complete lack of action in a time where it was needed the most. In essence, this book reveals how people high above refuse to listen while those low down attempt in every manner to make themselves heard. As COVID begins to take hold of the USA, a lone group of scientists are shocked at the complete lack of concern by their own government and everyone's refusing to take action based on very shoddy and flawed data. 
The book reveals the failing and incompetence of bureaucracy within governments and the pressure to be heard in an environment masked by delusion and dismissal. It speaks of a mass communication failure and general ineptitude of pandemic planning and response and draws heavy ties to human bias and error in relation to the interpretation of select statistics. Shockingly, the result of this is well, it's a mass loss of life and a complete failure in a time where public health care was so desperately needed. Despite having answers and solutions, those in the know were not heard. The hardest decisions are, are those where no one right answer is clear to see. The decision to lock down schools and restrict movement was one no one wanted to make. And yet this book reveals that if action is not taken early in pandemic response, it may be too little too late. In a situation like COVID, no one wanted to be right, and it was sadly that once that left people blinded to the real danger. Is this an exciting book with great twists and turns throughout? No. Should it be? Well, yes and no. I haven't read author Michael Lewis's other works, but I suspect this won't be held as his best. The narrative is engaging and the tales of the characters is enough to have this book play out more like a movie plot than a standalone non-fiction piece. This may be a trademark of his work. You learn of the disaster handling of a crisis in the USA and how most were asleep at the wheel. Perhaps if this were an isolated case, it would be more shocking and in a lot of aspects, it is. The US did not fare well when we compare it to the rest of the world, but I, I get the eerie feeling that no one did well in this crisis, and there will certainly be lessons to take moving forward. As such, seeing the failings of government and hearing the cry of the forgotten few, I can't help but feel that this scenario is not unique and so the shock value this book may have is diminished somewhat. In parts, this book was a struggle to get through, although it certainly picked up towards the end. I was just expecting more. I was expecting more shock value, and maybe I didn't get it because I read this book right now in 2021, where the stories and failings of the COVID-19 pandemic are so fresh and so normalised, at least on the surface. But I know it would be wrong and unfair for me to hold that as a critique against the author. This is a highly researched piece of literature that does create engagement for the characters, all of whom have my utmost respect, and it does create a rather shocking scenario and blaring failing in bureaucracy in the United States of America. It just didn't interest me all that much in the way I'd hoped, and I, I can't like it any more than what I do now. So with all things considered, I would score this book a 78 out of 100. My friends, an interesting book, quite a heavy book, a book which people may enjoy more than myself. Perhaps it was the overall focus on the US that I didn't like about this, which obviously is not a very fair critique because that's what the book is aiming for. But I would still recommend checking it out if you, um, let's go grab it. If you want to obviously read a book on the pandemic, I'm sure there are going to be so, so many more coming out. I know this author is very credible, so I did certainly want to check this out by him. And it's by no means a bad book at all. By no means. It's just, it just didn't, didn't have me as interested as I expected. But nonetheless, um, certainly a well-researched piece and well-written. There's, there's no doubt about that at all. I thank you very much again for watching. I will see you here again soon for another book review. Bye-bye.